Hey everybody, this is Ray and Andrew with REH CPA. Uh, we know we have a lot of business owners out there that own commercial property, and uh, I don't know how familiar you guys are with whenever you do improvements to that commercial property, but generally those improvements are deducted over a 39 year period. Anytime you get thrown into this commercial property bucket, you have to take your, your improvements over a 39 year period, which that can take a long time to realize that deduction when you had to pay all the cash up front. Now that is unless you can get that improvement uh, into this bucket, what's called qualified improvement property. Uh, I've got Andrew here with me today. He's gonna go over what qualified improvement property is and how that can help you. Uh, Andrew, can you Yes, yeah, so qualified improvement property is improvements that you make internally to a non-residential building after the date it was first placed in service. So after the date and first place of service is kind of confusing, but really all they're trying to say is you cannot build a new building and deduct those costs. It has to be something that has, has been there, a structure that's been there, already been rented maybe by someone else, and now you're coming into the, to the space. Right. So if you, if, you fit it, if you fit those categories, then you can accelerate the depreciation, the write-off on these improvements to a 15-year write-off versus a 39-year write-off. But the, the, kick, the, the big benefit is you can actually it's going to qualify for, for bonus depreciation, which would allow you to deduct it all in one year. Um, bonus depreciation or Section 179, there's, there's some opportunity there to maximize that write-off for one year. So a real big benefit for people who lease new space, have to do some benefit, to do some changes, make some changes to the inside, some remodeling, where you can deduct all of those expenses in, in, in the first year. So a couple examples of what would be deductible would be like wall partitions, drywall, plumbing, electrical, maybe Putting dropping a ceiling non, down non load now it can't be a load bearing wall you can't like you, you can't do anything to the structure yeah so the IRS is real specific it can be it has to be a non load bearing wall it has to be to the internal space of the property and it can't be anything structural right. so, so if it, you're doing floors you get you come in tear out all the floors put new flooring in you're able to take a deduction for that potentially mm -hmm. put up yep. new walls that aren't really load bearing but they're yep. just walls separating rooms yep um, all that good stuff that stuff yep. is all pretty much going to fall into that bucket yeah and one rule most of our clients aren't doing this but you can't put in an elevator or an escalator right. so that's a little another rule as well which we don't really deal there. much with but anyway but yeah so just 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 understand that if you're leasing a new space there's some opportunity there to get some really good write-offs in the first year so, absolutely yep. great well thanks andrew and if you guys own commercial property and you're getting ready to do an upfit or something like that and you have questions about how whether or not those deductions can be accelerated feel free to give us an shoot us an email or give us a call and we'll be happy to go over that with you yep. thanks